I'm often asked what is my favorite piece, and I always have the same answer, the Vietnam Women's Memorial. That, that's just huge to me, and it means so much to so many people. I served in Vietnam at the 18th Surgical Hospital from 1969 to 1970. I was with Army Special Services in Vietnam in 1969, 1970. I served in Vietnam in 1971 and 72. I served in Vietnam from March of 1967 to April of 68. I was involved in the Easter Offensive of 1972. I was an Army librarian. I worked intensive care recovery room when I was on duty, and I worked the emergency room when I was off duty. A lot of us who were wounded were constantly looking for the nurse that took care of us. I had no idea what it would be like to be in war. I'd never been a part of war. I had no idea what I was getting into. I had no idea that I was going to be the really the only woman in a sea of men. Let no one ever again mistake who you are. Let no one ever forget you again and what you did for this nation. And don't ever hide the fact again that you are a veteran of the Vietnam War. It's been a long journey here from Vietnam and other parts of the world where you served. But the journey for most of us still isn't over. Many are just beginning their healing, but this is our place to start. Dedication Day was really, really something, and something I will always remember personally. And it was so emotional. Everybody was crying. I'd just pat, pat them on the shoulder or something. And the men, would, the fathers, the brothers, the children of Vietnam vets, you know, everyone is so emotional, so how could that not be a favorite piece? This is our 20th anniversary. Um, some of you were here 20 years ago. I was in Washington at the time when the judging was being made for the different renditions that various sculptors and artists had put forward. Before us was Glenna Goodacre's sculpture. And in talking to everyone who was there, their first thoughts were, this is it. This is us. The nurses had seen my work at the gallery here in Santa Fe, and they left me an entrance brochure that I never received. And they called to see how I was coming on my entry. I didn't know what they were talking about, so they rushed a pamphlet to me. I got down to literally two days. I did a drawing of a little quick clay piece and then stayed up all night getting all the drawings together. It was astounding, the, the competition. The kneeling woman of the monument was originally uh, standing and holding a Vietnamese child. They did a lot for the orphanages. Six months later, they called and asked me if I would take my drawing and take out the child, the Vietnamese child, and do a maquette and to send them pictures. So I did all that and they were ecstatic. I worked all summer trying to figure out what to do with that woman. and. I had her turn to the left, I had her turn to the right. She had a jacket over her arm, she had a duffel bag beside her. And then I had some idea to just have her kneel. And so many, especially of the women said, that was me. I was that down and that dejected. So somehow I got a little, a lot of emotion in the piece. The three statues, the one I think that the civilian women identify most with is the woman kneeling with the boonie hat. The kneeling lady. To me she represents the part of me that got left behind. <laughs> if it attracts a viewer and they want to stand there and look at it and think about it 
and they want to walk around it. They want to say, that was me in that war, that's how I felt. The circular presentation really was a rendition that encircled us, that showed our connection to each other. No matter where we were, no matter what we did, we were all part of the effort. The sculpture just pulls in the camaraderie and the togetherness of the people that you worked with, and you had to help each other. This is about the women who went to Vietnam. The desired effect was to heal the wounds of war. The desired effect was accomplished. There's courage, there's despair, there's hope, there's healing. It's, it's all envisioned within it. It's a perfect replica to, to remind us all of the women who served and the women we lost and the women who survived but had invisible wounds when we came home. I came home in 1970. I shut my mouth. The Vietnam Women's Memorial Project was actually the catalyst for me to start talking about Vietnam after 20 odd years. I live in Santa Fe, and so I used to go over and on Friday afternoons if she was there and she would just let me watch her work and sometimes we would sit and I would be real quiet and she'd work and we wouldn't say more than 10 words. And then other times I could talk about what was going on, so it's been a real part of my healing. It was something you wanted to touch because it was, it was you, it was me, it was, it was all of us. The patina's worn off his hand where people have, have taken his hand. And uh, one of the figures standing has a hand out like this and the patina's worn off that. If my work impresses someone enough that they want to reach their hand out and touch it, that's satisfaction. That's, that's what I wanted to say. It's all of us. It is the Vietnam Women's Memorial. <laughs>